Hey everyone, welcome back to Small Batch Devs. My name is Austin. And I'm Elliot. Today we are going over more Angular interview questions, and that's going to make this video a part two. If you enjoy this video and you learn something, make sure to like the video, maybe subscribe to the channel, um, and also hit the notification bell if you don't mind. You could also check out our smallbatchdevs.com blog where we convert a lot of our videos on YouTube to, uh, I guess, a text format or a blog format um, tutorial. Without any further ado, let's jump into it. So the first topic in this episode is Angular's lifecycle hooks. Angular's lifecycle hooks allow us to perform certain actions during the different events of a component or directive. And this can happen when Angular is creating, updating, or deleting that component. Some lifecycle hooks include ng on init, ng on destroy, ng on changes, ng after view init, and there are many more. In fact, we actually did a video recently on uh, Angular lifecycle hooks. So if you want to learn more about them, you can check out this link right here and um, you'll be well informed. Very. Another common Angular interview question you may get is about data binding. And there's certain question variations that you might get, maybe like one-way versus two-way data binding, or maybe it's about string interpolation and property binding. But either way, we're gonna go through a little bit of each of them. Um, but basically, as an overview, data binding is a way for Angular, your, your components, TypeScript, to share data with and receive data from the HTML of your component. So concerning one-way versus two-way data binding, one-way data binding is really useful if you only need data to flow in one direction. So you're sending data to one place or you're receiving data from one place. And the common syntax for two-way binding that you'll see in the HTML actually has a name. It's called banana in a box. And this is when you'll have your, your square brackets. And inside your square brackets, you'll have parentheses. And then inside the parentheses, you'll have your variable that you want to be two-way data bound. So string interpolation is a form of one-way data binding. And this is going to be using a double curly bracket syntax in your HTML. So you'll usually have curly bracket, curly bracket, and then the, the name of a variable from your TypeScript. And that's going to inject the value of that variable into your HTML in place. Another form of one-way binding is property binding. And this allows us to bind to a DOM property um, of an HTML element. So basically what this looks like is you'll have your DOM property that you want to assign a specific value to and you'll use the square brackets with your variable in the middle um, as the value for a specific DOM property. So next is event binding and this is going to allow you to listen to events or data changes from a child component up to a parent component and this is usually going to take the form of a event emitter in a child component and you can subscribe to these events with a parentheses in your HTML of the parent component. So the last note about data binding, uh, we just want to cover some examples for two-way data binding. Um, and one common example is if you have like an input field, um, you'll want to assign that to a variable, obviously, so that you can go off and maybe save the data to some service in your TypeScript. Um, but you obviously want to possibly start off with some initial data in an input field. Um, so you'll use two-way data binding so that you can not only send the data to the TypeScript, but also the TypeScript will provide the HTML with some maybe some initial data. So the next topic is pipes. And pipes are just glorified functions that allow us to change our data directly in the HTML. And an important note about pipes is that they don't actually change the data, they just transform the data to look differently than um, what is initially saved in probably the variable that um, you're passing into the pipe. We can also write our own custom pipes to perform custom logic on our HTML data by using the at pipe decorator. Angular also comes with some pipes by default, such as the uppercase pipe, which will just translate a string to all uppercase, the lowercase pipe, which will translate a string to all lowercase, 
and even a date pipe, which will translate the string to an actual more readable date. Um, and there are many other pipes that come with Angular. Another important interview question to know about is observables versus promises. And when we talk about observables, we typically mean RxJS, which isn't necessarily a part of Angular, but comes with Angular. Observables are considered to be lazy because they require a subscription to be made um, to the observable before the callback function is executed. Observables also allow you to listen to potentially an infinite number of events. And within RxJS, you can use what are called pipe operators to manipulate the data as it's flowing through what's called a observable pipe. And if that sounds a little weird, observables and pipes and such, we do have a video on observables if you wanna check that out right here. So now onto promises. And promises are considered to be eager because the callback function, once you create a promise instance, is called immediately. Promises also only react to a single change, um, so this can be immediately if data comes back very quickly, or it could be a couple minutes or whatever. Um, if it takes the API or something that you're trying to call a little while to actually come back. So lastly, let's talk about directives. And we're gonna go over a few different types, starting with components. And components, believe it or not, are a type of directive. They're just a directive with an HTML view and odds are you're gonna be using these most of the time. Another type of directives is structural directives, and these directives determine whether your DOM elements are going to be present or not. A good example of these directives is the ngif or ng4 directives that you may have used before, um, but they'll basically use your code to determine if specific HTML elements are actually going to exist or not. Another type of directive is the attribute directive, and these just allow for extra customization, whether it be appearance or behavior of different DOM elements. You can think of these as like the ng style or ng class directives. The last quick note that we want to cover is that you can create your own directives using the at directive uh, decorator. And all this decorator requires in your class is a selector property. Um, so basically, what do you want this directive to be called in your HTML. So today we covered a few more Angular interview questions. We hope you learned something and that these Angular interview questions help you in your real Angular interviews. And if they do, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. And of course, as always, check us out on social media. We're trying to be more active on social media, and that's Twitter, Facebook, Facebook. The Gram and the gram. There's always the gram. Check us out on the gram. Um, but as always, we really appreciate you watching this video, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Could wait until it gets some data back from a... That, that you, um, you had, you, you, wait. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Love bananas in a box. <laughs> Structural. Struct. Structural. Structural.